Okay, we need to learn how to assign our budget resources here and enter in the values as in how much we want to set aside for the cost, material, and work resources. So for the uh, budget cost, it's going to be in currency for the budget work in hours, for the uh, budget material in units. So for budget cost, how much am I setting aside in currency for my cost resources? Well, it's just the one here, the travel expenses. I mean, that worked out easy. Let's say it's going to be $2,000. So in just a minute, I'll show you how you can assign $2,000 to your budget cost resource. So when you start actually accruing your travel expenses during project, like let's say one day you're at $1,200 and then the next at $1,300, as long as you're at or under $2,000, you're fine. But what happens if you go over $2,000? Well, okay, I want you to know that if you go over any one of these budget resources, project's not going to do anything. Because the whole purpose of budget here in project is for comparison purposes only. So you can compare in another view what you set aside for your budget versus your actual cost and say, wow, we're at $1,900 already and we still have a lot more travel expenses coming up. I guess we better call somebody and get more funding. In any case, how about the work? Now for the work, you're going to be budgeting for how many man hours it's going to take to complete the project. Let's say 500 man hours. So as you actually start entering in the man hours during a project, you can see how you're faring with what you plan for. And the same goes for materials, except materials is going to be in units. Think of it this way. If I have a total of five reams of glossy paper assigned to any one of my tasks within the project, and let's say five reams of plain paper and one printer as well, what are the total units that I've assigned for my materials? Well, we've got five glossy, five plain, plus one printer. That equals 11 units. So in other words, every time you assign one, of the materials it takes up a unit. So if you said for your budget you set aside 10 units then we're over by one. In other words we probably would have been on target except maybe one of the reams of paper had water damage and now it's just good for toilet paper. So let's go ahead and uh, first assign these budget resources. Just like we assigned all the other resources up above to a task, well what task do I assign my budget resource to? It's going to be the project summary task because isn't that what you're keeping track of? the budget for all the materials, all the work, all the costs within project. That's going to be our first step by going to the Gantt chart to assign our budget resources to the project summary task. Come over here, right click on the view bar, go to the Gantt chart. Okay, and just like any other task that you want to assign a resource to, it's simple. Just go ahead and select the project summary task so we can assign the uh, budget resources to it. Come up here, click on the resource tab, go to the assignments group, click on assign resources, and then go ahead and click and drag and select the three amigos there, the budget resources, then click on assign. There you go, that's it, they're checked and we're done. As a side note, you cannot assign any other resource that's not a budget resource to the project summary task. I mean, you can go ahead and select one and try to assign it, but the button's not available. Let me go ahead and close out. Now to go ahead and to enter in the values for the budget resources, let's go ahead and change views and go to the resource usage view by coming over here and right clicking on the view bar. There we go, resource usage. Now we covered this, or we went over this view in an earlier training video, but as a quick recap, just think of the name here, resource usage, what resources are being used. You can come over here and you can see the uh, tasks that are not assigned, that don't have a resource assigned to it, and then down below those resources that are assigned to a task that are being used or in usage here, you can see for Rider 1 all the tasks that have been assigned to that uh, resource. Rider 2 doesn't have any, but let's go ahead and scroll down because we want to take a look at the budget resources. And there they are right there. And you can see that they're all assigned to the uh, project summary task, which when I select this I can come up here and look in the entry bar because I can't see it down below the cells cut off. But in the entry bar, it displays everything within that cell, Spiffy Software Training Manual, the project summary task. Now to enter the values for the budget cost, the work, and the materials, I need to add some more fields because by default, the only two fields that are available in this view, the resource usage, is the resource name and the work. So I can go ahead and add a new column. And there's a couple ways you can add a new column or fields to this uh, table here. You can go ahead and right click on one of the uh, fields if you want to add a field in front of it. So if I right click on work and I come down here to insert a column, it'll actually insert a column or the field in front of work. So let's go down to insert column and we want to type in BU. There you go. It brings up budget just by typing in BU. 
and we want to go ahead and enter in the uh, budget cost or have that field available. And then if I come over here as another way to add in another field, you can click on Add New Column, and you get a list of all the fields that are available that you can add to this view. Let's go ahead and type in BU for budget again and select budget work. Okay, then I can go ahead and click and drag this around and double click really fast. Well, if I drag it out and one of these columns is just a bit too big, if I hover in between the two column headers to the right of the one that I want to go ahead and resize until you can see arrows pointing in opposite directions, then you can click and drag in and resize it just a little bit there. And then I can click and drag the split bar over. When I get close enough to the next column, double click really fast and it snaps right to it. Let me go ahead and scroll back over. Well, I'll probably have to drag it open just a bit because after I scroll over, I lose my views here. There we go. Double click really fast. Now I can see the resource name, the budget cost, the work, and the uh, budget work. Well, if I want to go ahead and have the budget cost next to budget work, then I can click on the column header to select the entire column. After I select the column, then you'll notice that when I hover over the column header, you can see I got a four way arrow. When you see that, that means it's in move mode. So you can click and drag and I'm going to drag it over to the right of work and you can see that line right there. When I let go, now I have work here, then budget cost, and then budget work. Okay, So I can go ahead and scroll down to the budget resources here and you can see here for the budget cost, I have miscellaneous. It probably would have been good to have it as budget cost, but I wanted to show you that it doesn't matter what you call your uh, budget resource. It could be budget spiffy. As long as I have cost assigned to it, then it's budget cost resource. Okay. In any case, go ahead and enter in the uh, total amount of budget you want to set aside for your cost, like let's say $2,000, hit enter, and there you go. And then you can see over here in the budget work field, it works for both the labor or the budget work, the total amount of hours, like let's say it's going to take a total of 500 man hours to complete the project, type it in, hit enter. And then if it says hours here, like it does there, just ignore it for a second and type in the number of units that every time you assign a material resource that counts as one unit. So what's the total of number of units for your materials that you'll be budgeting for within project? Well, let's say 10, hit enter. And notice how it comes up reams. Again, as you recall, when I right click the view bar and go back to the resource sheet, that I have my budget material, the label for it in reams. Well, it's going to keep track of my glossy paper and plain paper reams, but also it can keep track of my printer here as well because that's a material. You know, you can go ahead and delete the reams here and just say, okay, I don't want to keep track of the reams. I want to keep track of all the materials, or maybe I want to go ahead and add an additional budget material, one for reams and one for printers, and you can keep adding more like maybe for pencils and pens, where you can have a budget for material, pencils and pens, and have them in boxes. In any case, you get the idea. So let me go back and right click, go to the resource usage view, and if everything disappears here, well, in fact, let me show you what it looks like sometimes. I'm like, ah, I missed everything. Don't panic, because as you just saw when I scrolled down, it all disappeared. Sometimes when I switch views, that happens to me where everything looks like it's been deleted. Well, just come over here and scroll up, and most likely, or every time I've done it, I still had my data. It just automatically scrolled to the next empty cell, and I couldn't see what I had up above. Okay. Okay, so now that we have our budget field set in order here, we've got for the cost 2000 the budget for work, 500 hours, and the budget for materials and reams, 10. We can go ahead and compare those against the work field. Well, the work field's already been set up as we're moving through project. Maybe as we start entering in our actuals, which we'll cover in a later training video, like, okay, we set aside 20 hours for the admin assistant. I mean, when that person works on the task, it's going to be 20 hours. But when he actually does the uh, task, let's say it takes 25. So you have what you set aside or what you planned on, the work base here, and then what actually comes in, which would be called your actuals. Okay, we haven't covered this yet, but you actually have an actuals field. When you can come up here and let me right click and insert a column, and you have actual work. Let's select that. So we've got the uh, hours set aside that when we assign the admin assistant to search internal documentation automatically calculates 20 hours but when we actually start the task and the admin assistant's working on it going oh it's going to take a lot more time we can go ahead and enter in after the admin assistant reports to us and says okay it's 25 hours then we can say okay let's compare our actuals and add up all our actuals to see where we're at 
me go ahead and scroll over or let me drag the split bar over to where we're at collectively or as a total with the uh, amount of man hours that we set aside. So you'd have to come up here and count up the hours and go, okay, for the admin assistant, they had 20 hours, but they actually worked 25. So with 25 plus, let's see, project manager had eight there for the actual, maybe 10 for the actual for review the subject matter expert. Go ahead and get your calculator out. No, I'm kidding. What you can do instead is go ahead and group your resources by type. So if you come up here, click on the view tab, go over to the data group, and you see where it says no group, click on the drop down arrow and say you want to group them by type. When you select that, it'll have your cost grouped together, your uh, material resources grouped together with your budget. I mean, that's kind of cool because all I have to do is go ahead and look at the total amounts here to compare it to the uh, budget. So that makes it a little bit easier, doesn't it? That way you don't have to come up here and find one material, come down here, find another, it's all grouped together. And by the way, didn't we assign travel expenses, I believe, at $1,500? Well, let's go back to the uh, Gantt chart, right-click on the uh, view bar. Go back to Gantt, because we can see over here, yeah, $1,500. So when I right-click on the view bar, go back to resource usage, and scroll down. How come it doesn't show $1,500 here? Well, look at your fields here. Do we have a cost field? No, we just have work. We have budget cost, but we don't have just the simple cost field. So if I go ahead and right-click on budget cost, insert a column, type in C for cost. Let's go ahead and select cost. There we go. Okay, travel expenses right there, $1,500. There's the total. And you can see so far it's been assigned to review with, let me select it, review with subject matter experts. You can see up in the uh, entry bar. And we've got 2000 which is the budget. So if I right-click, go to the Gantt chart, and let me come up here and I select uh, this task and I want to go ahead and assign travel expenses to that. Click on the resource tab, click assign. Let's go ahead and scroll down to travel expenses, click assign. Then the cost, because travel expenses or the cost resources per task, then we can go ahead and enter in over here and we'll say $200, hit enter. Go ahead and close out. So we now have a total of 1700. So if I go back to my resource usage view, right click on the view bar, resource usage, scroll, scroll, scroll. There we go. So travel expenses been assigned to create outline, review a subject matter experts, gives me the total. I can look at the total here, compare it to the budget, and go, whew, I'm doing okie dokie. And then of course, if you want to go ahead and ungroup this, go back to the way it was, come up here, click on the view tab, in the data group, change the resource type, which is the current grouping, and go to no group or, you know, click clear group. And we're back to where we started. Well, except we have all these uh, fields here. I can go ahead and right click on actual work and say hide it. Or I can go ahead and select it and hit the delete key on the keyboard. It's the same as hiding. It doesn't delete the field. It just removes it from your table view here. Then I can go ahead and click and drag the split bar back and double click really fast to snap it to the uh, closest column here. As a side note, I know we haven't talked about reports yet, and that's going to be in a later training video, but at this point, since we're talking about budgets, if you want to view a graph of your budget, either in Visio or Excel, then come up here, click on the Project tab, come over here to the Reports group, and click on Visual Reports, click on the Assignments Usage tab, and you can go ahead and do it for Budget Cost. Let's do it for Budget Work, go ahead and select that, and click on View, and then give it a second to go ahead and pull up in Excel. And hey, if you know about Excel, you know what this uh, looks like. It has the chart and the charts based upon the data found over here in the pivot table view. And I talk about pivot tables in my Excel 2010 training videos. So let's go back to the chart and let's go ahead and close out of that so we can scroll down and see more of our chart. There we go. We've got the budget work, and then we have the work that's been assigned. And then you've got the actual work, which we haven't started entering in the actual work yet. So you can compare in quarter three. Let me not scroll up and down too much, but in quarter three we've got uh, the budget work, which is almost 250, and then just a little bit over it for quarter four. So collectively it's a total of 500 man hours for the budget. And then so far what I've worked here, and that's in quarter three. Okay, you can go ahead and save it. Let me close out, not save it. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, 
please see the description below this video.